Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and today is Tuesday and it is March 29th. So in addition to it being my friend Cheryl's birthday, <laughs> I have been stitching today for my whip go board. One of my whip go numbers that had been called was my autumn bell pull. I'll remind you of what that looks like. And my, I'm finished the letter A previously and I have been working on this letter U. And one of the things that I recently said was I didn't really want to stitch two exactly alike. And one of our, one of you lovely people that watch my videos and comment uh, mentioned well, why don't you just change the colors of the leaves? Brilliant, just brilliant. Kaylin, thank you. So anyway, I did just that. And I decided I would make the leaves on this first U bright and vibrant, like when the colors first start in the fall. And when I get down to the second U, I'm gonna leave them as charted with more of the lighter colors, more of the brown colors so that it looks like they have faded throughout the season. So, that's what I did. I have been working on this piece for the last three days. I started working on it um, actually on Sunday, this past Sunday. I worked on Dogwood Lace and I showed that uh, in, in a previous clip. And then I started working on my autumn bell pull. And I knew I was gonna work on it if I could until I finished the letter. So I didn't take pictures of it every day. So I will tell you, I stitched about 330 stitches on Sunday, about 377 stitches on Monday. And today I did 1,018 stitches. It was a lot. <laughs> I've stitched all day on this, most of the day. I, I did have some errands to run today, um, and I'll tell you about that in a life update in a little bit, but I finished the letter U. So, a total in three days of 1,725 stitches, but it's done, and I think it's beautiful. So, what I have done is I've taken the reds, in, that were called for colors in this piece. And I used the several shades of red, even a blend, to uh, be able to have the same number of colors to match the number of symbols that I had. And then I chose my uh, light yellow to golden to almost golden brown for my, what I'm calling my golden orange leaves. And so those are my color conversions for both of these leaves. I think they turned out beautiful. I think they look colorful. And so when I do the next one at the bottom, it'll look a lot more muted and a little bit more brown. So I think that's gonna be great. I'm actually toying with the idea as well of taking some of the motifs that are in here um, and possibly dropping one of the acorns on the ground or you know just something like that i don't know i'll have to i'll have to see how that does it may just be too complicated and and the color change would be enough so i have to tell on myself i have to tell what i did when you do a color conversion i don't know about you but what i did is i took a working copy and i went next to each of the symbols and i wrote the new color or colors, because I had um, two or three blends in here. Uh, and I wrote them next to that symbol. And so when I was pulling the colors for those symbols, I was pulling these new colors. Well, I got up around the top of this letter the other night, and I was stitching, starting this acorn here, and I grabbed the color for the first color in the um, the symbol in the acorn, and what I realized is it was an orange color. I had forgotten to look back at the original colors for the things that were gonna stay the same in the acorns. <laughs> 
And the funny thing is, I hadn't even pulled them. I had only pulled what I had converted and forgot that these need to stay the same. So I had to get up and go pull all of the colors in the acorns, and it was several. There's several colors in there, probably about five or six of them. And um, I had to go pull those <laughs> out of my floss stash, and I, d I had all but one. And so today before I, um, uh, at one of my breaks, before I started back stitching after lunch, I decided to put up all my DMC from my finishes that I've had on my um, cruise trip and right after uh, because I had floss boxes and rings of floss just laying over there to be put back away. And so today I decided I needed to straighten up a little bit so I would feel more comfortable. And I put all the floss away and fortunately one of them was the color I was missing for the acorns. So I didn't have to run out and buy anything. I was able to just pull it into my project and finish it up. So it's done. My whip go goal for Autumn Bell Pool is now met. So you know what that means. I grabbed my whip go board and I decided I needed to update it. So I haven't shared it in a while, so I want to share it with you now. This is my whip go board. So I have out of the eight things that have been called, six of them I have completed. I'm so excited. Six of the eight I've already done. These are the two that have been called, the ones that are in green, are the two that have been called that I'm still working on. You're familiar with this one, the angel uh, that I'm working on in Nativity. And this one is the new one for April. And it is uh, number 10 for me is Thankful Quaker. And it's gonna be a new start. And my goal on that is to do a top border and one side border. So um, I have it pulled and I have it kitted. So I am ready to start it in April whenever I decide to do that. And that was part of what motivated me to really, really work on this letter U because I have that one uh, goal with the nativity that I know is gonna take me a long time to finish it. And I just really wanted to be able to try to work on these goals each month, you know, as they came due. So I am tickled to death. Now, you'll notice there are some yellow squares in there, and I've explained this in the past, but um, someone mentioned today on, on a video I was watching that, um, I think it was Sammy J. She said, forgive me for repeating myself some, but you know, when you get new subscribers, they haven't heard it before. And I've had some new subscribers. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody. Uh, so my yellow for me on my whip go board means it has not been called yet, but I've already met the goal. Because I have been stitching on things, not just my whip go, as you know, I stitch on my whips for prompts. And so I touch other things and I will hit the goal ahead of time. So um, one of them that I have done, I just finished my Will You Be My Valentine. I was to complete the cart, which I did a long time ago. And now I have finished the whole piece. And then another one that I have worked on was Patriotic Sampler and I was to complete one row and I got really motivated with it and I finished it and it's framed. So it's going up here uh, right after Easter in my decor. And likewise, Winter Quaker, I was to complete one row, which I did. And so now I want to start working on the next one, but not for Whipgo, just you know, so that I can be working on it. So this has really been great this year to help me focus on some of my whips that uh, have been a little bit slower for me to get into or have been languishing a little bit like Autumn Bell Pool. So it's been really, really helpful. So I just wanted to share that with you and uh, let you know what I had been up to. I'm not counting my Autumn Bell Pool um, letters as a finish with Stitch from Stash. I didn't start that. Um, I figured it would be just really awesome to wait and put the whole thing in. And it probably won't even happen, maybe not even this year, I don't know. I'm trying not to put um, any pressure on myself to say it has to be finished this year. So 
And I think possibly because I have so many new starts on my WIPGO board. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven new starts left on my WIPGO board. <laughs> That's pretty neat, right? Um, and then I've got some pretty big projects on here as well. I've got um, to finish a whole season on Crab Apple Tree, and I haven't worked on that since I've been traveling, so it's due for a little way, a little bit. And I also want to get 10 hours on my Miracle of Every Single Day, and I've only gotten four so far of the 10. It hasn't been called yet, which is okay. Um, the others, uh, there's a free space in here, and then there's a whip closest to a finish, which could be whatever. Um, it could be, you know, one of my newest ones, or it could be an older one, depending on how much I get to work on something. So, that hasn't been called yet either. Anyway, thank you, Jessie Marie, for calling this early, because it gives me a chance to plan, and you guys know that I like to do that. Well, we have two days left this month and in addition to getting some planning done for next month because we already have the acrostic for the monthly magazine challenge which is bookmark and um, we have our whip go numbers the only acrostic now that i'm waiting on will be our 24 hours across stitch and i look forward to getting that when she's ready to put that out i haven't checked to see if it's out yet so um but that'll give me what I really need to start planning uh, what I'm gonna do uh, for next month. So, in the meantime, I am free to stitch whatever I want for the next two days. This week, my husband and I are going to a local theater to see Cinderella, and uh, Coco's gonna get to go and play with Fred. So hopefully I'll have some more pictures of her coming up on this video of her visit with Fred. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that you guys enjoy seeing her. Uh, I love sharing her with you, so thanks for that. Okay, I also want to address one more thing. I've had a couple of comments from people mentioning they're having a hard time hearing me. Others do not, so I don't know what else to do. I have um, my phone up as high as it will go. That's what I record on. I have my phone attached to a microphone that I'm using. Um, so when I upload my video, I put it on the highest volume. So I don't know what else to do. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Um, I'm speaking in a normal voice and times I speak even a little bit louder on purpose, or I try to. Um, the only time I don't is when it's very late and I don't want to be talking very loudly because my husband's asleep in the bedroom just right down the stairs there. Um, and my voice would go right into that room and wake him up and that's not fair to him. So those times I may be speaking a little softer, um, but not remarkably so. So if you are having trouble hearing me, please accept my apology. Um, maybe you could look at it on a different device and see if it's better. Um, but I'm doing all I can to keep it as loud as I can. So thanks for letting me know you're having trouble, but I don't really know what else to do. Um, so I did want to address that. I didn't want you to think I was ignoring you. Um, okay, that's all the news for today. That is my update for the day. And I will wish you a very happy week of stitching. <laughs> happy stitching, everybody. Good night. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dana, and it is April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. I love that one of the prompts that um, popped up in one of the Facebook groups today was about April Fool's and a little bit about the history to it. I enjoyed so much sharing that with my husband today at lunch. It was um, just a little tidbit that I could um, share with him regarding the change in the calendar and um, how that all happened. And, and he just thought it was one of the neatest stories. And so that was a lot of fun. So 
I wanted to uh, show you my stitching progress that ended today, uh, or so far, I guess. Uh, that was a wrap-up of, of March. And then I want to tell you about my plans for April because April is going to be all about acrostics and lists. So I want to share that with you. I think it'll be fun. I'm excited about it and I can't wait to get started. In fact, I'm going to be starting on it in a few minutes. So I wanted to, to tell you about that and I want to show you a find that I got today too. I'm so excited to share that with you. So first of all, let's talk about wrapping up March. The last thing I did in the month of March was to work on my Hawk Run Hollow, my spring at Hawk Run Hollow. And the reason I did that is I had a prompt in one of the Facebook groups. It had five prompts to stitch on and they were to stitch on um, a, a project you had that were um, that represented walking or hiking or something you would find on a walk or a hike, something with a border on it, something that was your stronghold that was either your favorite fabric or using your favorite floss or something of that nature, um, something that you could relate to your home and something that you could relate to a source of light. Well, my Hawk Run Hollow, my spring at Hawk Run Hollow, fit all of those. So I'm gonna grab my pattern and show you how that met um, each of the prompts. So here we go. So walking or hiking, here's that. I think it would be beautiful to be walking or hiking and come across a beautiful stream like that with a lush uh, banks to that. And, and I think that was lovely. Plus, um, you know, going along the shoreline on a, on a walk is beautiful. So that's kind of what I was counting on for that one. As you know, there are borders around each of the blocks in Hawk Run Hollow. And the one I happen to be working on is this first one. And there are borders after borders after borders on there. There's the outer border, and then there's the uh, border on the other side of the brick. And then there's a border on the other side of the window. And then there's the border for the little squares inside the window. So in some cases, it's four uh, borders, right, you know, boom, boom, boom. And so I did a lot of work on those borders. And to get those done, um, I worked on some things that carry over across the border that would interfere with the border to help it with its um, my counting. So that was the border one. The reason that I said this fit my, strong, my stronghold is that I'm stitching it on Platinum Lugana. And Lugana is my favorite, favorite fabric, and platinum is one of my favorite colors. So the, the fabric was my stronghold. And how this related to home? Well, this one shouldn't be a big surprise, but I don't know that I've shared it with you before. You see the swings down here where these children are swinging back and forth. I had a swing set in my side yard, and it was the center of a lot of attention when I was growing up. You know how you swung and you would swing as high as you could and, and as high as you could get, then you'd jump out. You know, we did silly things like that. It's a miracle we all survived. But anyway, that swing in here, the two swings with the two kids side by side, it just brought that back to me. And so that reminded me of home. And as far as a source of light, you can see the sun right here and the sun is a huge source of light. So all of the five prompts that I was stitching for, I could meet with one piece. So that's what I did. And I wound up stitching yesterday. I got four of those prompts finished and it was a total, because I had to stop after each 200 stitches and post a picture. But at the end of the day, I had stitched 841 stitches in that piece, which is wonderful. And then today, I had the fifth prompt to finish. Now, this, um, this event uh, goes through this coming, um, this next Friday, so, uh, or Thursday night at midnight. 
and so I am well, well within the time frame to finish it today. I didn't have to finish it by the end of March, which was a blessing. Um, but today I wanted to finish it because I want to start all of my all my April plans starting today. So I came in and I finished stitching on Hawk Run Hollow for this prompt and I wound up stitching another 226 stitches because I could just, I went ahead until my thread ran out. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you the Hawk Run because I don't wanna take it off my floor stand because what I'm gonna be stitching on in April includes another couple of prompts for Hawk Run Hollow. They're in different Facebook groups, so I can double dip on them, but I don't wanna take it off my floor stand because I'm gonna go right back to working on it. So let me turn you around and I will tell you about my progress. Here's the Hawk Run Hollow. It's still on my floor stand, but this stitching time, what I have completed would include this outside border, all of the brick mortar down here and across the bottom, this second border right here, and this border, and this border all the way across, and all of these plants have been stitched this time of stitching. So I've made a great deal of progress on here and I'm just gonna continue on it when I tell you about my plans coming up in April. Okay, now that I've got you turned back around, let's talk about April. Well, as you know, if you've been watching me at all, I love to do the acrostics in the 24 hours of cross stitch and the monthly magazine challenge. And now there's another Facebook group I'm in. Unfortunately, it's a closed group, but um, they have decided for this month they're gonna do an acrostic as well. Uh, the um, first two groups, those are pretty, pretty lax. They'll let you do whatever you want. Uh, you can stitch whatever number of stitches you want or whatever goal that you want with your acrostic. You just come up with something that you feel you can tie to the letter in the acrostic. So let's talk about those first. Monthly Magazine Challenge, the acrostic this month is bookmark. And so I have come up with what I'm gonna work on for each of the letters in the word bookmark. And as I do those, I will definitely share them with you. I'll be posting them in the Facebook group as well. But it will involve a separate I don't think I'm double dipping on any of those as far as using them more than once. I'm not, I'm doing something different for each one. Uh, that's how I try to touch all of my active projects is by trying to find a letter that meets a different one for each letter instead of doubling up and doing one, you know, for more than one. And then if we look at the 24 hours of cross stitch, that acrostic for the month of April is what fuels you. Fuel, as in, you know, energy gets you going. So I have assigned one of my whips uh, to each of those letters. But I will tell you, in both cases, I had to include a new start. It's my whip go goal. It's to start thankful quicker. And so I've already put thankful quicker as a new start in my acrostics. But then there's another um, acrostic um, that I'm going to work on for the month of April that's different. It's in, a, it's in the closed Facebook group. But it um, you could certainly do it on your own. I will share it with you. So if you want to, you can. But the acrostic in that group is Easter time. And they had some instructions for us. So we were to stitch 300 stitches. Now, if you're not doing it officially, you can, of course can set whatever goals you want. But uh, we have to do 300 stitches. It can't be something we're doing for another prompt in that group. And if you do it, um, you have criteria 
to help you pick which project matches the letter. So instead of just coming up with whatever you want, uh, you have to follow a series of instructions. So in that group, the letter has to either be in the first or last name of the designer, or it has to be in the actual name of your design, um, or it has to be the first letter of uh, the name of an object or thing in the design that you're stitching. And you have to show that, you know, put a picture in to show what that is. It took me a little bit longer to come up with all of that, um, but I did it. And um, you get extra points if you do something with five different um, projects, and then you get additional extra points if you do all 10, and all 10 are different projects. So, you know, I had to do that, because <laughs> that's just the way I am. So, the good news is, though, all three of my acrostics are in different Facebook groups. And so I have tried to use each uh, one of my projects to hit a letter in every one of the acrostics so that when I stitch it once, I'm actually knocking out three of my prompts. And that's how I'm gonna get through it because otherwise I think it would just be overwhelming, just absolutely overwhelming. I am still in a group that does um, an animal adventure, which gives you eight animals every month for you to find. And the way you find them is either walking, running, riding your bicycle, uh, driving a car or a plane. So that's how you go from either 100 to 500 stitches is how you travel. That cannot be um, double dip. Those stitches can't be double dip in that same Facebook group. But those three projects have to be declared ahead of time, and you have to either stitch them to completion to change them, or you have to earn a um, special pass in order to change them. And um, so I'll be working on those three for finding my animal adventures. Um, and that's good because they're three I, I wanna work on anyway. So. You'll be seeing a lot of my whips, probably all of them, and then I'm hoping to have my new start um, because it is a whip go goal for this month. It was the one number call that I didn't already have done for the month of April, which is great. So I will be starting Thankful Quaker this month. Uh, my goal for whip go on Thankful Quaker is to do a border, uh, thank the thankful border goes up the left-hand side and across the top. And so that's the part I set for my goal. If I get more than that, that's gravy. But I wanna get at least that side and top border done for whip go. So I think that'll be fun. Well, I think the, that's all the planning portion that I wanna share with you. Be looking for some good progress, I think, on some of these whips uh, since I you know, am using them for all these acrostics. Now what I want to share with you is very exciting. My son has uh, decided rather than to remodel a basement, go through all the construction and the cost of all the materials. Materials have skyrocketed right now and you also can't find people to do the work. We're having a really hard time, um, you know, doing that. So um, he got to looking and decided that it was time he was ready to be on his own and get an, uh, his apartment again by himself. He's lost enough weight that he is able to drive without falling asleep. So he's been driving himself for a couple of months now, making sure that he's doing well there. And he is sleeping so well, he doesn't have to have a CPAP machine anymore. So we, we're not afraid that he's not gonna wake up the next morning, you know. Um, He's just ready, I think. And so he went out looking for a couple of weeks and he found himself a lovely studio apartment, brand new apartment building. Um, he'll be the first renter in the apartment ever. And um, it's probably about 700 square feet. It's not that big, but he doesn't need a lot. It's just him. Um, and he moved in Sunday while I was 
at the cross stitch retreat. I'd already talked with him and we'd already agreed on what uh, furniture he wanted and needed and and um, so he knew what he could take without any trouble. Um, and my husband was here to help him. But he got a couple of his buddies and they rented a truck from uh, through Home Depot, rented a U-Haul, and he moved into his new place. And this week I've been getting texts um, pictures of what he's putting up on the walls, you know, getting his artwork or artwork up on the walls and that sort of thing. So I asked him what he wanted for a housewarming gift and he said he would kind of like a floor lamp. Um, and so today my husband and I were at a, um, a sort of a consignment shop. It's called Out of the um, Coat Closet and it's where people rent booths. And they call it the OCC. <laughs> and we went down there and looked, and there was a beautiful black floor lamp that has the um, Frank Lloyd Wright design um, glass shade on it. And he likes Frank Lloyd Wright a lot. And so we got it, and they gave us a discount on it, and um, we were tickled to death. So now I get to clean that up a little bit because it's a little dusty. And um, I'll put a big bow on it and take it to him tomorrow because he has invited my husband and I over for dinner. He's cooking in his new apartment and he's invited Coco to come. <laughs> so I think that's awesome. He said we have to bring Coco because we have to break it in right and have the whole family there. I think it's great. So... While we were at the OCC today and I was looking for a floor lamp for my son, I saw this in the corner in one of the stalls. This spins, which means even though one side is deeper than the other, I could have two designs on here and I could just flip them around pretty quickly or I could do the, the um, magnets and washers so that it's easy to change it out, which would be very easy to do as well. It's on a stand, it's on a pedestal, and so I have this much space to work with for a design, which I think is wonderful. I've gotta look through my um, things waiting to be finished. I don't think I have one that would fit in here yet, but I'm going to be on a mission now. I'm going to figure out what I want to put in here because I want to mount something on this, and I think that would be wonderful. In the meantime, though, this is chalkboard paint, which means I can write on it. So I'm going to be putting it in my guest room for now that I'm trying to set back up because my son just moved out of it, uh, and I can, you know, put welcome on there. Um, and I think that'll be fun until I can get some cross stitch mounted on there. But I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled. Picked this up and walked out with it today. When I found it, my husband said, what are you looking at that for? And I told him what I wanted to do with it. And I said, I want this. And he said, well, take it. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Took it right up to the counter and uh, got that. So got that and my son a lamp. We did great today. We did a great, great uh, shopping spree today at the OCC. So that was a lot of fun. Well, I think that's everything I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I am going to get started on some of my prompts for my acrostics. And the first one's going to be Hawk Run Hollow since it's already on the floor stand. I hope you guys are starting out your month with wonderful plans if you like to plan or just stitching if you just like to stitch what you want when you want. I hope you're enjoying it and I hope you haven't had too many April Fool's jokes pulled on you today. <laughs> In the meantime, until I uh, get to visit with you again, happy stitching everyone. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. It is April the 2nd, and I'm here to give you a little bit of a stitching update. I started out yesterday working on a prompt on April 1st. This was in one of my Facebook groups, and I had just finished up 
using this same piece for five prompts in one group and I had one more prompt uh, for April that I needed to work on and it was on Hawk Run Hollow again. And so I did stitch another 300 and something stitches, 367 I think, uh, since I shared this with you. So you may not can tell a whole lot of difference, but I'll tell you what I did work on, just to let you know, because it's kind of hard to see it. But I'm working in the border in the window frame. And so I finished all of the squares, the four panes there, I finished those up. And I came over here and I started the white. This white had been done. So I started the white in the second row here and I went all the way across with that. And I turned the corner and came down just a little bit. But that's what I got done until I finished off my thread and that was 367 stitches, mostly in white, but I made it. So that's ready to be put away for a little bit. And um, I'm excited to let you know I hit one of my prompts for April with that. So this morning I decided, what am I gonna stitch on? Because I'm talking with my friend Glow and we started a piece together, the February wordplay. So this is what it looks like on the pattern. Lots of gray looking blue, beige, kind of um, dull to me, primitive, I guess. Um, and that doesn't match so much my color palette. So for February, I wanted something pink. I think you've you've probably heard that story already in a previous floss tube where the fabric was 40 count and I couldn't see it. So I went running back into my stash and grabbed this because it was the closest thing to a pink or purple that I had. And it is a really pretty Ada. It's an opalescent Ada. It's pretty, but it's rough. This is scratchy, almost like a steel wool. It's, it's so scratchy, it's shredding my threads. So I will tell you, this will be the only piece I stitch on it, even if I have extra fabric, which I will, I think for a little while. But anyway, today I put in 339 stitches, not necessarily while Glow and I were talking, we got busy talking and didn't stitch so much. We had a lot to catch up on. Um, but I did stitch a little before we got on the call and I stitched quite a bit after we got on the call. So today I put in both of these words on the bottom. I put in the four little white hearts. It's hard for you to see them right in here. Then I did the tops of those three flowers. And I did when I did this word, I had to do the little bluebird. So I came over here while I had it on my needle and did that little bluebird as well. So that's where I got to today. I'm pretty excited. I am probably um, one or two more stitching sessions away from a finish on this one. So if I don't get to pick it up again, because I did it this morning um, speaking with Glow, but it also meant one prompt for me in the 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic. Um, I was using it for the letter F uh, in what fuels you, so F in the word fuel. So it was great because I made a prompt with it, um, but it's not on my schedule for any other prompts for the rest of the month. That doesn't mean I won't pull it out though because my husband and I are gonna take our puppy and go to a friend's house at the beach for a week this month later on. And when I do, I think I will be looking for things on Q-snaps that I can take with me, and I am working on this on a Q-snap. So, this may get pulled out again, simply because it'll be make, it'll make really good travel stitching. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's my progress on that so far. And now I'm gonna reward myself with a little bite of lunch, and, um, and then I will probably start working on our little bed that we purchased. We purchased a headboard and a footboard from a consignment shop. Uh, kind of a consignment shop. It's a charity shop. They make money for um, homeless men that they're trying to help find uh, a place to stay. Um, and so we went there and found this headboard and footboard. It was quite dirty. I had to Clorox it. There was a little bit of mold on it. 
it was surface though. I got it all off and uh, it's been drying. I cleaned it, I washed it down really well, rinsed it down really well, and then I had to get it dry because it is wood. Um, and so now my husband's gotten me a wonderful product that cleans and shines, sort of puts a, a good finish on your wood that you've had to, to treat, <laughs> you know, that you've had to clean. And so I'm gonna go do a test spot on that today and let it dry real well and make sure it looks okay. Somewhere maybe on the back of the, the pedestal or something on the back of the headboard um, and just check it out. But I'll be doing that. And then this evening, my husband and I have been invited to our son's apartment for dinner. I can't wait. He wants us to bring Coco and break it in. Um, so I'm excited for him and I can't wait to see what he's done with his place, how he's decorated it. And um, I'm looking forward to that. I will hopefully get a little more stitching this afternoon. I would love it if I could meet one more prompt today. Saturdays are usually really good stitching days for me. So we'll see. In the meantime, happy stitching. Hello again, everybody. It is still April the 2nd, and this is a record, I think. <laughs> this is the third time I have uh, jumped on here to share something with you today, but I was able to stitch for one more prompt, and I wanna share it with you. I had, for one of my acrostics, I needed the E for Easter, and this has promises of Easter series. This is the acrostic I'm doing that the letter actually has to be in the title or the author or the designer's name or an object in the piece. So for this one, I've stitched it um, that time for new beginnings because it is part of the Promises of Easter series from Twin Peak Primitive. So I think that qualifies. And the prompt requires 300 stitches. So I put in 316 when my thread ran out, and I think that'll do it for that prompt. I'll have to look. I think I may have another prompt. Um, I do. I think I think I may I may have to do this one again, but I'll look and find out. But so for right now, this has met the E in my Easter time um, acrostic, and so. 311 stitches. So I'll tell you what I did. I started out putting the little centers in all the flowers that I've that I've stitched. I have two more flowers to go, but since they weren't on um, on the actual body of the lamb, I, I waited till I got down there to them. And then I started filling in the ecru that's in the shaded portion on the little lamb's back. I went ahead and finished outlining it all the way around, got all the counting done, and then I just started filling in. And so between those two, I got 316 stitches, and now I'm gonna look and see what my next prompt might be. If I have to do this one again, I'll just put it right back on the cue snap and keep going. But if I'm done for this one for now, then guess what? It's on the cue snap, which means it may go traveling with me. I had originally thought I would like to get this one finished in time for Easter this year, but I, do, I just don't know if I will. This little shaded part of, is ecru, and then you've got this huge body, this just solid white stitching all the way across. I'm actually gonna be using um, grits for that. And then I've got two little flowers right here. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but you see what I've stitched in here on the body that's 316 stitches right there. And look how much more. There's the shadow. And then I got all that body to go. It could take a few hours. Anyway, I don't know whether I'll make it or not for this year, but I'll definitely finish it in time for next year, that's for sure. So if I don't finish this before we go to the beach, then this one will probably go with me to the beach because I can outline that little lamb's body and I can just stitch and stitch and stitch and um, not have to count. And that would be great for travel stitching. I don't get to stitch in the car when Coco's with us because she wants to sit 
in my lap any other time she doesn't want in my lap but in the car she does it's kind of interesting okay so that's my goal for that uh, prompt and I will let you get back to stitching I'm gonna be um, getting ready to go have dinner at my son's house the other thing I've done today is um, since he's moved out I think I may have mentioned uh, we now have an empty guest room and we went shopping you know at a, a consignment store and got the bed post and, and headboard and footboard so today I spent just uh, about an hour uh, down in the basement doing a special treatment on the bed with a um, cleaner that cleans and restores the natural shine and helps uh, color up all the scuff marks and things like that and you wipe it on and you let it soak in a minute or two and then you wipe it back off and so I did that today and I'm telling you that headboard and footboard look beautiful now so I can't wait for my husband to get home with Coco from the groomers because I want him to see it and see how he likes it now that we've got it all cleaned up and and restored and so hopefully tomorrow if the bed is ready I can set up my guest room I'm looking forward to that well I will talk to you soon and until I do happy stitching everybody Hi everybody, uh, this is a book review that I'd like to share with you. I recently completed a book on a trip and I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. It is called, My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry, and it's by Frederick Blackman. Um, I, I was intrigued by this, by the title of it, and uh, it's an interesting story. It's written almost in two parallels. Um, Elsa is a seven-year-old girl, and she is uh, almost eight years old. In fact, she turns eight in the story. And her only and best friend is her grandmother, who is, oh, probably uh, in her late 70s, 79, 80, somewhere in there. And she is nutty as a fruit cake. <laughs> She's just crazy funny. And she is... Um, devoted to Elsa and she realizes that Elsa is uh, different than the other children. She's extremely smart and precocious and she just looks at things differently. Um, and Elsa is being bullied at school and she's being chased every day home from school and her grandmother is trying to help provide a distraction for Elsa um, by being funny and doing crazy, unpredictable things with her. But the biggest thing that you need to know about her grandmother is that her grandmother has created a fairy tale land for Elsa to escape into with her. And it's called the Land of Almost Awake. And um, she has created worlds in that uh, fairy tale and has all these characters that have come through. Um, trials and triumphs that she has shared with Elsa. And as you read through the story, you begin to realize one by one that the heroes in the stories are actually people that Elsa knows and she doesn't realize it and that live right in her own apartment building. And so the, um, the book proceeds with Elsa's grandmother uh, passing away. And that's really not a... Um, a big giveaway for the book because most of the book happens after that. That happens very early on because the book is written about Elsa taking on a challenge, a, a uh, quest that her grandmother asked her to do right before she died, which was to deliver letters to people that her grandmother felt she owed apologies to. And she, that hence the title, my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry. And then Elsa would deliver the letter to the person. And, um, and as it turns out, um, they're all people very close in her life that uh, in proximity to her, they live in the same apartment building with her. And she learns the truth about her grandmother and her grandmother's life. And, um, you know, all these people that she's been living in the same building with for eight years that she knew so little about. 
and all of their stories, and you get to learn all their stories with Elsa. The book is written from Elsa's point of view. Um, it is a very unique um, storyline. The, the beginning is a little bit, um, for me, was just a little bit tedious because it spent so much time in describing the fairy tale world before it got you into the real world um, to make the connections. But as soon as you make one connection, you realize that there's going to be a whole lot more. And so you get really interested to see how that plays out. Um, it is a good ending. It is um, a good story. There are um, stories about people's um, relationships, you know, being uh, improved and restored somewhat in some cases by uh, the interactions that Elsa has with them. And um, the, at the very end, you get to see the letter that the grandmother has written to Elsa, which is very sweet. And, um, and of course, the grandmother's goal to have Elsa get to know all of these wonderful people um, is accomplished because she's had to spend time with them, talking with them about these letters. And so I really liked it. I didn't think I was going to in the very beginning. So if you do get this book and you start reading it, be patient with it. Give it a few chapters before you decide whether you want to read it or not, unless it grabs you right away. I think for me, I was starting to read this book when I didn't have a lot of time and I was just going to read a chapter here and a chapter there. And it, that may be part of why it took me a little bit to get into it. Um, but I did get into it and I did enjoy it a lot. So um, I think it's a sweet book and um, it's not all sugary sweet. There's, there's real life in here. And um, so uh, I will give you a, a bit of a warning there are some triggers in here so bullying is in here um, and there is a reference at some point uh, uh, a little bit of violence not a lot but there is some so I just wanted to make you aware of that but I liked it I enjoyed it and um, I'm glad I finished it I'm glad I read it so I just wanted to, to uh, mention that to you and um, see if you might be interested in reading it so thanks for letting me share my book report with you. Now I'm going to get busy stitching. <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll have some of that to share with you later today. Happy stitching, everybody. Coco has spotted Kayla, the mail lady, she comes, she comes. and she's waiting to see if we have any mail, but more importantly, if she has a treat today. Ha, 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 ha. 